Nice. Al Leiter, I'm wearing his jersey. I gave you the numbers. Tell me what makes him so effective. What do you see on the mound? Good morning, Laura. Good morning. We missed you. Love that jersey. Miss you. Uh, what makes Logan Webb effective? A nasty I'll, sinker. I'll tell you what. I think coming off your breakdown of Christian Yelich uh, says a lot about what I think fans and people who haven't played at the major league level don't realize when it comes to what's going on between the noggin. And I think the one nugget that you showed was Christian Yelich's less aggressiveness down the middle. Because what are we taught as pitchers? And what are you taught as hitters? We're, we're going to start on the plate. Yeah. And then as I go 0-1, 0-2, 1-2, I then continue to go off the plate. So there's constantly this battle between miss, miss. Now you're honing in, right? I got 2 2 one 3 one I'm looking for that. So for okay. Christian Yelich. Yes. So here, I know we're going we're gonna to have fun with this. But Logan Webb. And Lauren said, grew up about 100 miles from San Francisco, right? Grew up a fan, the whole bit. So he's a Northern California kid. And kind of was meandering. Fair enough, man. You look at what he did. And, and on that May 5th date, I've got a little quick story before I go into this tape. The 5-3-4, you look at all these numbers. It's not even close to what he has been since May 5th. He had a clunker against the Philadelphia Phillies after the game, went to uh, Gosman's room. And he sat with him. And you know what Gosman basically cut him down only as players can do? Cut the beep, you know what? And kind of let him have it, as really? we do. Right. Hell yeah. And it wasn't like a, you know, you know, but get your no, head I out. I believe of, in you. Get your head out of you know where. Yeah. And your stuff is elite, and you're spraying the ball. How long does it take for you to realize, like, hey, my stuff plays? Like, how long did that take you? You were a guy who threw gas. I think it's a chicken and egg thing. I really do. I think you could have every coach, every analytic person to say, man, you got great stuff. But you have to stand on the mound, trust it, and not think that every pitch that you throw is going to get crushed. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's the ebb and flow, whether we're talking about the greats of the game or guys that are just struggling to stay in the big leagues. You are constantly dealing with that. And that was the epiphany moment. Uh, to have that, you know, let's go. His walks per nine were higher. He cut it down by almost two. He was over almost close to four walks per nine. Now he's at 2.1 and then so on and so forth. But here's the, here's the thing where you finally find out who you are. And I think it's really commendable to the Giants. It's an analytic-driven uh, team, right, with yep. Farhan Zaidi and the rest of them. He basically canned his four-seamer, always had a really good slider change-up combination, and started throwing a sinker. So what does that mean? That means, like, let, let's go to the tape, Lucas. So it, it really means that we, here we were all about launch angle and worried about, thank you, look at that, look at that, Claudia, oh, Logan's Claudia web. Claudia throwing an actual. So here, on. I, I want to I show what, 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 stop right there for a quick second. All right, so all along it was what in the analytics community. We have launch angle. Get north south. Every guy has to go boom. And then on a certain velo, off the barrel, at a certain velocity, with a certain angle. Now, you're going to tell me otherwise. You're not swinging that up. I know it's after the ball. It's going to go X amount of distance, right? Yes. So you have pitching coaches that were convinced by the analytics community, you know what, Logan, you better not throw down here. Let's, let's, let's thread this needle here. Let's go high, 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 and then bury stuff in the dirt. So we have a north and south. It wasn't working for him. And if you look at his delivery, he's a right-to-left guy. He's not a north-south, here it comes, for cement. So go ahead and play this. So I love it because I, I can't tell you how many guys I played with that had sinker slider action, that were dominating. That is a hot sinker, by the way. 94-95, right? So you got sinker down the zone. That was more middle, but we're going to get into the mental side of it. Nasty slider. So you got sinker, slider. So really the scissor effect, like what we like to refer to, is a ball that's, stop right there, Lucas. So the scissor effect, the sinker, hmm. goes this way, away from the lefty, in on the righty, and then the slider goes that way. So you're constantly dealing with this. Well, just from a hitter's perspective, you take the 17 inches, and if you don't have good command of the strike zone, you turn it into almost 34 inches with this. Which is what? I, I can't cover in. Now I don't know where the outer half is, and you get me in this. Which is actually what you used to have to deal with prior to the, the I, new strike zone. Because I thought guys, it was much more difficult to hit Logan Webb than it would be to hit a guy throwing four seam north-south with a breaking Real ball. quick, why? 
because it stays on the same plane. This pitch is moving planes on me. I don't know where the end result is. Once I commit to a four seam fastball right here, as long as I can get to it, Play it's coverage. not deviating this plane. Yeah. Where the two seamer was coming into me and I'd go to stay inside it and it was almost chasing me. I couldn't get barrel on. So it. play coverage. We're, we're talking about play coverage. Yeah. North South play coverage. You can get a barrel to this. But now when I start, I'm seeing a ball that's here that's ending here. Or I'm seeing a ball that's here that's ending here. Now I'm covering 24, 25 inches. Now you're Can't in trouble. The barrel is how far? How, where's the sweet spot on the barrel? Show the server. Right here. How far? That's it. So that's what you're covering to hit the ball really hard. Go ahead and play it, Lucas. All right, so so nasty, right? So we're getting to a conversation. Kevin Gosman, let's go. Your stuff is great. Kapler, everybody's talking to him about be aggressive. You look at mindsets of pitchers, and you look at their disposition and demeanor. Look at this changeup. Back that up. Back that up, Lucas, because this will be the last couple here. All right, come out of it and stop at release. Move forward. Right at, right at ball release. Stop. Back it up one. Okay, there it is. Look, look at the angle here. Why would you want to have a dude like this throw four seam when he's throwing it out here? Where are we? When you're throwing it out here. You're, you're so you're so right. So we you're we're so right. The yeah, body but, but, everybody's body moves a certain way and fall in love with how they move and what makes them successful and what they can repeat. Chris Sale, if someone tried to tra change Chris Sale, he wouldn't have the success he's had in his career. And we're trying to put guys in boxes of what the analytics community says works and you can't do that some guys are taller some guys it hurts to be here other guys got to go down here some guys are fat some guys are skinny some guys are muscular some so this says all over it because he's a right to left guy go ahead and play this this is just nasty folks oh, I mean the, the dip on that is very similar to Kevin Gosman's uh, split okay I wanted to show some side let's see what kind of side angles we got here I mean, I, I, the, the sink, that was a sinker. I thought I had to have Claudia play it back. I thought it was a, actually a slider. These are, I'm sorry, change ups. Uh, the movement is so great. All right, so we got another one down there. Tatis is, uh, drops on, on, a, on a power, power uh, sinking fastball. At 95. 95. Stop right there. Back it up. Back, back it up, Lucas. All right, so, <laughs> he's back, people. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 back. just that ball release. I'm sorry, Lucas. Go ahead. Keep going to play it. I, I want to show another facet of why guys are – keep going until that side view. Yeah, right here. Keep going at ball release. Stop. Stop at ball release. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. One more. Okay, stop right there. All right. So this is a big dude, right? So, you know, generally speaking, you have about 85, 90% of your height, right? So you try to get out there. You get out there off the rubber so you can create energy to get to home plate. So let's just say if he's 6'2", 3", He's got a six, two, or three uh, 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 landing foot. Look where he lets this ball go. d the, the, the why this is so important, if you look at ex uh, extension, yeah. release extension, where they let this ball go, not everybody can do that either because some guys are short. Your reaction time now, if that's a seven-foot extension, which he almost is, you have 53 feet. Yes. And you have three components that you have to figure out. What's the pitch? Is it a ball or strike? And am I going to swing? All within 1.14, three-tenths of a second. So. Go ahead and play that. That actually was a, a, a slider that goes down and away to Tatis. It's just an exceptional pitch. And mostly, and again, I, I, I'm so glad that you had uh, Christian Yelich tape before this because it's about confidence. It's about believing your stuff. It's about believing what other people are telling you. Here it is right here. Real simple. This is really stark. He was a four-seam guy. Yes, he had the slider. Yes, he had the changeup. He flipped the model. Boom, why am I trying to go four seams up upstairs when I'm throwing low three quarter and I'm getting this action? And now I'm trying to thread a needle upstairs with guys that can't do it. So you, you figure out what you can do, and we're going to talk about young pitchers in a few yes. blocks from there, because there's a guy that you follow with the Braves that I wanted to include in that. Slider, swing and miss, confidence. My thing is, and you get to shift, I'm not saying you didn't in the past, but like a guy like Logan Webb, Farhan Zaidi and his staff, the metrics, Everything's getting hit on the ground with a good defense behind him. It's like, I, I always felt like a sinker was way, way harder to hit than an elevated fastball. So two things in the analyst community that you look for. His walks per nine went down and his strikeouts per nine went up. Now, is that a product of just feeling better? Is it did he, because of his repertoire change? Is it because he finally got his head out of you know where? 
his walks per nine in 1920 uh, were 3.6, four. It doesn't sound like much. Maybe people at home is like, what's the big deal? It, to, down to almost two, even two. So he's aggressive, he's throwing more strikes. Then you look at strikeouts per nine. His strikeouts per nine were right at about six and a half. And now he's over nine, almost 10. It's not, t 10 is an elite, but if I could get a strikeout per inning, and my walks are down. I got less base runners. What you said, you played in San Francisco. Not an easy place to hit a home run, especially with the, at nighttime. Uh, he doesn't give up home runs. Like, there's a lot of reasons to like him, but mostly he believe, started to believe in himself, and the stuff that comes out of his arm corresponds now with the results. He's definitely the most underrated pitcher in the game. People who don't know him and haven't seen him, Lock in on him. I mean, it's start to finish now. Every start is 95 to 96. Power change up, power slider, sinker, and he's giving them a chance to win every time he touches the ball. I'm and glad you said that. Real quick, Ruffalo. Uh, this is this. These numbers go back to May 5th of last year. This isn't like, but you know, I'm gonna have fun with the young guys. It's not three or four starts. No, like this is after a while, you get to a point where you're like, all right, this guy's consistent every <laughs> game. He's given up two runs or less. Yeah. And it's fun to watch because he doesn't throw 100. And I love the fact that we have a lot of different ways of uh, dominating.